of yourself Man, your good is dead Sitting in the sunshine, bathing in your wealth Watching all the sufferers in hell Brother, please hear my plead You can help, oh can't you see, can't you see Man, you could be free Working in the sunshine, freeing up your wealth Helping all the sufferers in hell Jamaica, seemingly a fairy tale island, land of eternal sun, beautiful endless white beaches, and the ubiquitous calming sound of reggae music. Many associate it with the pacifist movement, hippies, and freedom. Meanwhile, the reality is exactly the opposite a reality so different that it moved a Jesuit, Father Richard Ho Lung, to a degree that provoked a personal revolution, irreversible in its consequences, and one that changed his monastery existence forever. At that time, I came to a crisis in my vocation. I was haunted by my experience of poverty in Jamaica. I had to change. But it was, it was drastic because I'd spent so many years doing doctorate studies, master's studies, and then to what point? I mean, what is the purpose of all that? if finally you don't end up living the gospel and doing what Christ did. Father Ho Lung comes from a poor immigrant Chinese family. He has personal experience of how it feels to be hungry and without a roof over one's head. Catholic priests and nuns helped his family following their arrival on the island. In spite of being brought up by his mother in the Buddhist tradition, Ho Lung never ceased to be fascinated by the Jesuits, by their family unity, communal prayer, work, as well as their tireless preaching of the gospel. He decided to join their ranks. Yet, in spite of the fascination with monastery life and an intellectual career, a feeling that something was missing increasingly dominated his thoughts. It was a real miracle to have met Father Holang. I was just about 16, finished in high school, and he was our religion teacher. We were just thinking about graduating, going on to our degrees, you know, playing chess and football and soccer and troubling the other high school girls in the school next door. And here comes Father telling us about the poor, about the beauty of Christ. Father took us into the slums, into the ghettos of Kingston. After school, we would go with him to visit the poor, to see the real suffering of our people, something we had never seen before. Father began to tell us about these situations of injustice in our nation. He thought that something had to be done to address some of the issues that he felt were very urgently needed to be addressed. He was not settled in terms of, say, the Jesuit vocation um, should be his. I think he probably saw something more. Whilst searching for a meaning to his Christian calling and the purpose of being a priest, Father Ho Lung ends up in a government-run help center for ill women and handicapped children. He is stunned by what he sees. It was in a condemned building that was owned by the government. And I was in the custom of going there and um, just helping with a little volunteer work, bringing them clothes and food and so forth. The government had herded these old people and these retarded children into these abandoned buildings and they were not being properly cared for. And the, there, were, there were even incidents of rats going in and eating the people, literally. 
In a letter to the press, Father Ho Lung appeals for an improvement in the living conditions of the inhabitants of Eventide. In his letter he writes, I am hoping to evoke community action on behalf of the suffering inmates of the home. Pictures he took also appear in the press. He calls on the local authorities to build a new home, as well as urges them to improve living conditions in other government-run care homes. However, his actions are not welcomed by the Jamaican authorities. The man who was Minister of Local Government called in a lot of people from the press. They mentioned this priest is really a traitor. He's a traitor to this country because he's going contrary to the economic plans of the country. He's advertising Jamaica as an ugly place with a lot of poor people, and people will not want to come to this island. I forbid you to show any more pictures to any of the public. I just replied, God has sent me to do my work. God has sent you to do your work, which is to build the economy of this country. But it cannot be built on falsehood. And so I will do my work and you will do your work. But I will not stop from publicizing the plight of the poor in Jamaica. Shortly thereafter, the whole building went up in flames. The cause of the fire remains unclear to this day, though an opinion was voiced that the building had been set ablaze on purpose in order to free the government from paying running costs that it could no longer afford. It was thought to be a political act because they wanted to get that, that old home out of the area so the land could be used for their community because this 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 was a massive home. I was deeply affected when 155 of them died. These things I could not get out of my mind. And um, the correlative I saw between the the poor in Jamaica and the word of God was very, very striking. So that it ended up in great prayer, but also concern that I was not living my priesthood in a proper way. I dream of an island of peace and love. The fire shocked Jamaicans to a degree that the government succumbed to social demands to build a new home. The founding of the Missionaries of the Poor was a direct consequence of these events. The gifts of each man shall be used for us all. Archbishop Carter, who was also a Jesuit, he gave permission for me to start this work with the poor. He believed also that it's very, very important that for Jamaica and for the church, that there really needed to be men or women in the church working with the poorest of people. Father Ho Long, Father Brand, and Father Hayden from Trinidad were the three founders of the Missionaries of the Poor, under the inspiration of Father Holong, of course. They um, stayed together, prayed together, worshipped together, and then Father expanded and conceived and formed what is now the Missionaries of the Poor. When we started, we had nowhere to live. We just knew that we wanted to do something for the Lord in, in answering His call to live the Gospel with devotion and, and commitment to Christ. And um, the Archbishop of Kingston was open to Father Holong's vision, and he gave us our first accommodations. We were just given an, an old convent, and that's where we started. And I remember seeing one child, his name was Damien. He had a rope around his foot. He was tied to his bed. He was served a little bowl of rice, and he was suffering from cerebral palsy. And as he scooped up the rice and the kalalu, the bowl spilled over on the ground. The food got mixed in with his urine and his feces, and the poor hungry child was scooping up all of this and plastering it all over his face and his mouth. When we went with Father and we saw that, you just hear the Lord saying, help me. We cleaned up the dorm, we cleaned up Damien and the children, we made some sandwiches, 
of jam and bread while feeding Damien. He had never tasted jam before. When that child bit into that jam sandwich and he tasted the sweet jam, he gave me a big smile. And I've never forgotten that smile. The problems the missionaries had to confront were huge, further complicated by the underlying political, social and economic issues Jamaicans had to deal with. Jamaica was ruled by the British for 300 years, its natural resources assuring a prosperous existence. After regaining independence in 1962, the economic situation progressively worsened. Violence, poverty, drugs, homelessness, the collapse of family life began to overwhelm and then triumph on this most beautiful of Caribbean islands. Kingston, Jamaica's capital, is regarded as one of the world's most dangerous cities. In spite of an increase in the number of police street patrols, the government continues to fight a losing battle against an ever-growing crime wave. When you come to the Caribbean, you only see the lovely, lovely side of the Caribbean where people come to relax. The beaches and the wonderful sunshine, fresh air, uh, and the laid-back attitude of the people. But you don't see the other side, the destitute, the poor, those in hovels, those who are rejected by society. That part you don't see. That's the hell of it. Jamaica is known as a tourist paradise. And sometimes to attract the tourists, the government tries to just really take up the people from the streets and, you know, put them away without proper care. The violence started with the political parties who were encouraging the political tribal groups and maybe furnishing them with, with weapons. And then weapons were connected with, with marijuana or ganja for trading abroad, then they got weapons in return, and so therefore it, you had an escalation of things. Now the politicians like to rein them in to say, down boy, down, but it's like a Frankenstein. How do you tame a Frankenstein after you have created it? fundamental mission we have is to work among the least, those who really, unless you are there, they will die. That's the focus of our mission. That's a fundamental ministry of our community. When we first began, we said, how are we going to do this? We don't know how to take care of homeless people, whether they be children or adults. But we just knew one thing, that Christ would not want his people to live in the streets and to die in the streets. Just that knowledge forced us to really say, okay, let us make an act of faith. Brothers give service freely to the poor. We have people that we take up off the street, people that can't help themselves, the mentally retarded, also babies that are left at the hospitals. Sometimes they bring some of them to the gate and leave them. Older men, older women, and we have to take them in because they have nobody. 